Good afternoon. Great, uh, great resolve uh, by our guys. Great uh, team win. Um, we, we really challenged the guys at halftime and uh, knew we could play better uh, both sides of the ball, knew we could finish uh, a little bit better both sides of the ball, a block, a tackle, a throw, a run, uh, a play on the ball, all those things. And uh, we just needed to have some good things happen. And luckily, we were able to get some th things going late in the third quarter. They they go up, I don't know what, I think they were up 21 or something. Um, but then we have the big play to deuce, and it kind of sparked our sideline. And um, and then we were finally able to, it's a great offense. I, I, I knew the quarterback was an exceptionally good player. We had to keep trying to pressure him to try to uh, get him off schedule and stuff. And you know, we really thought if we could get those guys off the field once we had a chance to block a punt, we were only going to get one shot at it, but we thought we could get a block and we were going to come after it. And it was the right time we were able to get the block and, and uh, uh, just kind of went back and forth. But uh, uh, guys made some plays in the second half and, and uh, it's one game. That's all it is. And it's a great win and all those things and, and stuff. But uh, it's just one win. And, and unfortunately, we're just two games into the season, or fortunately, I should say. And I'm so excited to get into a routine now. Okay, we'll get started with Derek Young. Yeah, Coach, I know you said that you have more games to play, but how satisfying is this one for you after everything you guys kind of went through in the offseason with the dis disruptions and distractions and then the adversity from the loss in week one? Uh, it's never going to be just about me. It's about all of us, our staff and our team. So for all of us with the things that we've gone through um, for a long time and, and obviously since the first time we played uh, that two-week stretch, um, with some of the conversations we've had with our guys and stuff and, and uh, leadership showed uh, this past week, obviously showed today and excited for everybody involved with K-State football. And coach, I know it was kind of out of necessity and some personnel stuff, but Echo Boydo got his first real meaningful playing time uh, today. Uh, did he earn more playing time for the future regardless of the circumstances? I believe so. We'll see the film, but uh, I was excited for, for Echo's opportunity to play a bunch. I was excited for Justin Gardner's opportunity to play a bunch and, and, and knock on wood because who knows who's going to be available next week, you know, and that's kind of what, what everybody has to realize on our team and across college football is, you know, this is a great win and stuff. Okay. Now we got to go back on Monday and see who's available and get those guys ready to play, whoever that is. And that's, I hate to say that and you guys uh, don't want to hear that, but that's, that's unfortunately the reality we're living in. Thank you. Let's go next to John Kurtz. Yeah, Chris, what, what to you was the most impressive part of Skyler's game today and what he did for you guys? Um, the fact that we weren't having success rushing the football because those guys were just teeing off on us and running a lot of run blitzes. So he knew he was going to have to throw the ball for us to win. Uh, we had to throw it out of a lot of different formations from max protecting to empty sets. And, and he knew he was going to take some shots because they were bringing pressure uh, and he just hung in there. And uh, there's something about this, this guy. And, and when, when people kind of want to count him out uh, that he makes plays and, and uh, uh, he knows how I feel about him. He knows I love him. And um, he, he showed up big time today and was a warrior and, and threw the ball really well. I know this is a question that basically could have been asked after week one, too, and we pretty much did ask you. Are you surprised at this point just how good Deuce Vaughn has been, how much of a weapon he is for you guys already? No. I see it every day in practice. You know, you watch Eli Sullivan, and everybody knows Eli Sullivan's a really good linebacker. You watch Eli Sullivan try to try to cover that kid in space like their two guys tried to on his 80-yard play or 70-yard play. He's so quick, he's so shifty, and he's a much stronger lower body guy uh, as, as running than people would give him credit car, credit for. He's got great strength, obviously really good hands, and uh, I'm glad he's on our squad. Thanks, Chris. Kellis? Hey, Chris, what would uh, you say you're most proud of with the way the defense played today, just given that that's where most of your player absences yeah. were? Well, we bailed ourselves out in that first half when we weren't moving the ball offensively and they were kind of moving it at will, I think we were able to get a couple of big interceptions to, uh, to stop some drives there, which uh, uh, gave us some life uh, until we were able to get some things rolling, I think, offensively. And then in the, in the second half, when the game started to get a lot tighter, uh, our coverage got, became better, our rush became better. And so the thing that I'm proud of is they, you know, had some resolve in that first half when we could have gotten blown out and then, uh, 
uh, our conditioning really played in, uh, came into play. I thought our, our guys up front, we rotated a bunch of guys. I thought our guys in the secondary and linebackers covered well. And, and I just thought that fourth quarter, we played really good football. Maybe it's hard to pinpoint, but what to you was the turning point that uh, kind of opened the floodgates for the offense? Because you had seven points, and then all of a sudden the second half, four straight touchdown drives and a field goal drive to win the game. What changed? You, you know, we were starting to catch some of those, make some of those plays in the passing game, some of the shots downfield and 50-50 balls, and then obviously getting the, uh, the, the play to uh, Deuce uh, gave us some life, big play, get it down to the one. They come right back down and score, and then – um, they cut Keon Mosey loose, just like he cut a guy loose. It's hard when you get quarterbacks that can scramble and look look downfield and keep their eyes downfield, as both uh, Rattler and, and Skyler can. Um, you, you can't cut people loose, and we did it, and they obviously did it as well, and Keon had a big play. And so we were answering their long drives, uh, or quick drives, I should say, with big plays. And, and uh, so it just kept giving us life and kept getting us hey, – if we could keep it within – Two scores, if we could ever get it down to one score and get a stop, we had a chance. Let's go next to Arnie. Um, yeah, when uh, you got the, what was the tying touchdown, you uh, you lined up to go for two, but you took the delay. Was Were you trying to draw them, or was that the plan no. there to, to go for it all the way? No, on the road, uh, we were a, a gassed, uh, tired football team, even though they were as well. Uh, I was showing – how much trust and love I have in the guys. We were going to go for two, get up by a point, and stop them on defense and try to end the game. And we had some confusion um, with uh, how we called the play. And so we didn't get it off. And so then I wasn't going to do it from the seven. Let's, let's tie it up and let our defense uh, try to get a stop, which they were able to. By the way, big kick by Blake after that then, 50-yarder. That, that was huge. And uh, Blake uh, – uh, I'm so happy for him to be able to come in and, and bang a – I asked him what his distance was. He said 52. I, I don't know, but it looked like it could have been good from 60. Let's go next to Karen. Hey, Coach. Congratulations. Great win. I got to ask you, the second half, it wasn't just adjusting to Oklahoma. You said you challenged the guys at halftime, but what was that speech about? Because – this was a team that started to dominate and had a, a different purpose than the first half. Is it just that you reminded them of, of last year or what they could do? I mean, what was that speech that suddenly lit a fire under them? Um, more in the fact of one play at a time, dominate your job one play at a time. Don't worry about the previous play. And we had that happen to us a little bit in the first half where something happened and we thought about that play and then we ended up giving, giving up another play and forget about that, that uh, previous play and, and just dominate one play at a time. And, and uh, uh, I, I asked you guys, do we, are, are we good enough to be on the field? Are we good enough to play, play with these guys and beat them? And uh, uh, they all said, yes. They said, even though we're down at half, yeah, we, we feel we're good enough. And I said, then let's, let's show it one play at a time. We're not going to score every play. We're not going to stop them every play. But one play at a time, do your job. And if we do that, guys, and get this game in the fourth quarter, uh, I like our chances because we've been in a lot of four-quarter games. And A.J. Parker, I mean, how does a guy – I mean, that kind of talent, that kind of speed, I mean, is that what you see in practice all the time from him? You're talking on the block Blocking punt? the punt, yep. Yeah. We, we, he's, he's got a really good knack for that in blocking a punt, and so – um, we had a good design scheme that we felt like if we could ever get him to punt, we could never get him to punt early on, uh, that we had a chance to block it. And luckily, I think that was in the fourth quarter when we did make that block. And, you know, and there's another great example. A.J. Parker, uh, because of all the losses we had in the secondary uh, this week, we moved him inside to, to nickel and played brand new kids at corner. We moved Jerron McPherson. That's usually a free safety because of Wayne's injury. And Wayne was able to play a little bit, but we knew Wayne wasn't going to be able to go the distance. We moved Jerron another spot. We moved Will Jones. We moved everybody in the secondary uh, to a different position and had three days to practice that. And uh, was it perfect? No. There were some times it was really, really bad in the first half. But they kept getting better. They kept learning. They kept listening. They kept trusting uh, what the coverages were and trusting what their eyes were. And we ended up playing really well in the second half as a, as a secondary. Thank you. Okay, we got five left. Let's try to go through those real quick, starting with Max Olson. Hey, Coach. Uh, at what point in this week did you feel like you guys were definitely playing this game? Friday. 
And what just what was that process like over the last you mentioned it, the, those last three days of just getting your DBs ready for obviously, uh, you know, the kind of offense that's going to challenge you in every way. Yeah, a, a lot of short meetings, walkthroughs, um, sending them things that they can look at on their iPad um, because you can only meet with them so many hours and just trying to uh, have the older guys talk to them and, and just try to show them as many things as we can. There's so much to, to this offense. You can't show them everything or you're going to defend nothing. So we tried to show them some of their base stuff and their best things. And um, like I said, it wasn't perfect, but uh, I know that they improved throughout the game. That's what I was trying to see with all those new kids. Did they show me fight for four quarters? And that was obviously answered as a yes. Thanks. Glenn. Coach, uh, when was it in the game? Obviously, you're trying to stay hopeful the whole time. Was there ever a time when you felt like, holy cow, we're actually in this game. We got a chance to beat these guys and, and you felt like the guys really woke up and, and realized that they were right there? You know, I don't look at the game like that at all uh, as far as I just kind of am, am, you never think you're in it. You never think you got the game won. You never know if you're out of it. I, I just, I know that may be cliche, but I, I just, we just don't think like that. We just just keep grinding away, play after play, and let's see where we're at at a specific time. And, and lo and behold, we were at 28-14 after a score. Uh, and, and even though they went down and went 35-14, I thought if we could score quickly enough, we could get back in it. We were able to score really quickly. And, uh, and our guys kept saying, man, they're not stopping us right now. And then slowly some of those stops became big. You know, we got a big fourth down stop on defense, huge fourth down stop, which is a turnover. And then you throw the fact that I think they threw three picks – uh, there's three more turnovers. And we had a fumble, Jerron McPherson, a big play. I, I, did we turn the ball over today? I don't think so. So, yeah, I mean, we're, we're four, plus four in the turnover, plus a, a fourth down stop. Thanks, Coach. Ryan Black. Hey, uh, Chris, you, you touched on it a little bit in, in a separate answer. It wasn't specifically about him, but just how big was it for – for Blake to make that kick? Because that opener was really the first time in his entire K-State career that he had ever really struggled in a game. So to you know, come here and kick the game-winning field goal, and it has to do a lot for his confidence. It does, but Blake is a pretty cool cat, as most of you guys that know him is. He doesn't really show his emotions on his sleeve. And um, I wasn't worried about, is Blake going to be OK, just because I've been around him enough and so appreciate him as a person. Um, and and trust him and uh, obviously showed that today with uh, asking him what his range was because shoot we wanted to score a touchdown and and, and um, so we were able to bang the field goal in. Michael Goins. Yeah Chris in what ways have you continued to show uh, confidence that you have confidence in the offense's big play capabilities? In, I'm sorry, your question in, which, again? in what ways have you continued to show confidence in the, in the offense's big play capabilities? Um, the fact that we have a number of guys that can make big plays. You know, we have a number of running backs that can, and we were down Harry today. We have a number of receivers. Uh, Bradley Moore, I think, is a really, really special player. So we've got, we have a lot of guys that can make plays. And I know our, our coaches and our quarterback obviously know that uh, um, just give us some time. There's a bunch of guys that can do some things with the ball. Okay, let's finish, finish up with uh, Adam Rittenberg. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Chris, you got a, won a lot of big games in your career, but just the unusual circumstances around this year and, and, and like you said, not knowing the game is going to be played till yesterday. Where, where does this one rate for you in terms of uh, big wins in your career? Pretty big right now. <laughs> you know, it's pretty big right now. There's no question about that. It's a big win with the circumstances that we faced and um, some of the adversity that our guys have gone through and excited that, uh, uh, that we fought for four quarters. And, and uh, I trust those guys. I believe in them. And that's the biggest thing is they need to believe in themselves because uh, we as coaches um, believe in these guys. And that's why they're here. And they know we love them. They know that we, we want to give them opportunities. And, and they made the most of it today.